So far, when we've been testing our web services that we've deployed in Glassfish, we have been using this tester page. And this page is courtesy of Glassfish. All we need to do is use the service name URL, question mark tester, and uh, Glassfish provides us with this nice HTML page, which actually looks at your web service and then identifies what are the methods, what are the input arguments and all that, and creates nice forms, right? So this uh, shop info service has a get shop info um, operation, which takes in an input, so it's actually created a text box and a button. And when I enter an input here, it actually makes a call to the web service and then it shows us the SOAP request and the SOAP response, right? And it also gives some Java specific information. So this is handy when we are uh, testing our web services that we have deployed in Glassfish. But if we need to test an external web service or maybe a, you know, a web service that we deployed in another server, this tester page will not be available, right? We'll need to find another way to test our web service. So there are a lot of tools in the market which let us test SOAP web services. It lets us make this kind of a SOAP request and it lets us examine these kind of a SOAP response. So one such tool that I'm gonna be talking about in this tutorial is called SOAP UI. SOAP UI is very widely used by a lot of uh, QA professionals. Uh, you access it at soapui.org. Uh, this is an open source tool. It also has a commercial offering called SOAP UI Pro, but uh, you see here there's a download SOAP UI. So this is open source and it's free. So we can, um, we can use this to test our SOAP web services. So you have a download button over here which gives us the installation depending on your operating system. It's a standard installation procedure. You just uh, extract or install and all that. And you have uh, an executable on your desktop. Another way to use this tool, the SOAP UI tool, is as a plugin inside of Eclipse. You can choose to do either. You can choose to download a separate program and run it, or you can choose to have it running inside of Eclipse. Once you have it up and running, the functionality is the same. You have you can do the, pretty much the same things in both the standalone program and the plugin. For this tutorial, I'm gonna demonstrate how to run it inside of Eclipse. So as with any Eclipse plugin, to install it, go to the help and uh, install new software. Here you can choose the site where you have the plugin available. And then once you enter the site, you can see the plugins that are available at that site. So we need to find out where the SOAP UI plugin is made available. So we have this page over here, which gives us information about the SOAP UI Eclipse plugin. It's again on soapui.org. So it has instructions. Like it says here, you go to help install new software. And in the work with field, you enter this URL. So basically this is the URL where the SOAP UI plugin is made available. So I'm gonna click add. I'm gonna create a new URL where I can uh, get the plugin from. Hit okay. Now in this URL, it's actually looking at the available plugins. And there you go, there is SOAP UI. So I'm gonna check this, hit next. Next, I accept the terms and I click finish. And that's it. Now Eclipse is gonna download and install the plugin. And after the 85 megabyte download, here's a warning that says that I'm trying to install a software with, which has unsigned content. I just hit okay. And now I'll need to restart Eclipse. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And here is my Eclipse restarted after the installation. Now, what I can do is go to the window menu, show view, other, and search for SOAP UI here. So you see there are two new views that are added by the plugin. So one is a navigator and one is the logs. I'm gonna choose navigator here and hit okay. And here's the SOAP UI navigator tab. I'm gonna move this to the left. And uh, here we have projects option over here. We don't have any projects because we just opened it, but we're gonna create a project which lets us send SOAP requests and uh, we can see the SOAP response from the web servers of our choice. So before I start to create a new project, let's take a minute and think about what such a tool would need to do, right? So let's say, you know, instead of SOAP UI, you had to write your own tool. What would you need to do 
to have a tool which sends SOAP requests and receives SOAP response. Now let's say we have a web service and you want to test this web service. So you have to have a client. Now this client could be a Java client. We've already done a WS import before, right? We got a visual, we did a WS import, generated the stubs and then created the client. So all that would work, right? It would make a call to the web service, send a SOAP request. But if you want something a bit more generic, if you don't want to strictly call a single web service, you want to write a client which can call any web service. You want to be able to send a SOAP request and then whatever response it returns, you just want to be able to see the XML, right? It's fairly straightforward. And actually that's what SOAP UI or any of these other tools does as well. So essentially the client is actually making an HTTP call. We know that the web service that we have been writing, right? We've written uh, the TestMart web services. They have all been accepting requests over HTTP. So in that sense, it's no different from any of the other web requests that we make, even for web applications, because that happens to be HTTP as well. Now, what's special about this web service call in that case? Well, the difference is even though this is HTTP, what's happening is, the SOAP request that's going is actually being sent as the post body. It's actually making a post request. And in the post body, we have the SOAP request, right? If we know that it's XML, we have kind of glimpsed at the structure. We haven't gone into the details of the SOAP message yet, but we know that it's XML. So with any web service call, you're sending an XML as a post body and then making an HTTP call. So that's all there is to web services, ladies and gentlemen, all these fancy terminologies, it just boils down to making a post request with an XML body. But anyway, that's uh, the, the thing about the SOAP technology is you have all these standards, right? You wanna make sure that people follow strict standards when they send an XML, because we need to be sure that whatever web service you're calling actually understands the XML, right? So that's the reason why we have all these standards, all these terminologies and all that. But at the very basic, we just have an HTTP request with a post body containing the XML. So that's all we need to do, right? We don't need a, spe you know, a special client. We have uh, browser plugins that lets us tweak the post body when you send an HTTP request. So that should do as well. You know, just make any post request with an XML and you can make a web service call. It's as simple as that. But what these uh, testing tools like SOAPUI helps us do is to construct this XML for us. So we give it the visual and it gives us the XML and saying, hey, I read the visual and I know that you want to make this web service call. This is the XML that we need to use because that's what the visual says. So instead of typing the XML yourselves, I'm going to provide you with the XML. Just fill in the blanks and then submit it, right? So that's all that the testing client would ideally need to do. So once you send the request, the response is again over HTTP and it is the XML again, which is the SOAP response. So this is in summary what any SOAP client would need to do. So that's what SOAP UI does as well. So back to our SOAP UI plugin. Now we can create a new project, which lets us send SOAP requests. So I'm gonna right click here and say new SOAP UI project. So I'm gonna call this SOAP client. And now I need to give the initial visual location. We know that the visual for our um, application, let, let me choose this uh, shop info service. So the visual is available over here. So I'm gonna copy this URL and I'll provide that over here. So I'm giving the location of the visual. And there are some options over here. It, you know, I can create sample requests for all the operations. I'll show what that means in just a minute. There are a few other stuff like creating test tweets and mock servers and all that. We are not really worried about that at this point of time, but they're actually handy if you want to create some standard test cases that you want to run, uh, you know, multiple scenarios with. But for now, I just want a sample request. So I just have this checked and I press OK. Now what SOAP UI is going to do is it's going to look at the visual, it's going to identify the operations, and it's going to create a sample request for each of the operations. So there is a get shop info operation. We already know that in the visual. So it has actually created a request for this operation. So there is get shop info and it has created request one. Now what does this request contain? If I double click this, 
you see there is actually a sample XML. So this XML is something that SOAP UI generates after looking at the Vistal. So it knows that for anybody to call this get shop info, the request has to be in this specific format. So it's actually created that, it's created a SOAP message and it has this one value over here with a question mark. So what this means is, this is a value that we need to pass. In the Glassfish tester page, you remember there was a text box. So this is the equivalent of that text box. Instead of providing a UI text box, what it does is it creates a question mark inside the request where I can actually fill in the information that I wanna send. So I can actually send the same parameter since, right? So I wanna know since when the shop was open. So that was the scenario. Now I can actually submit this SOAP request. And the way I do that is by hitting this play button. When I hit this, here you see I get a SOAP response. So this is again an XML and I'm getting the get shop info response element. And then the return value is since 2012, which is as expected. Now I can actually send a wrong information and actually check the fault. So remember this was a problem earlier. We had not gotten the right fault message when we sent an incorrect value. We had created the exception in our service, but we didn't actually see that fault message. So let's try that out. So I'm gonna provide some incorrect input. And if I run this, here you go, we get the fault message. So there is a S colon fault and we have a fault code and uh, the fault string is invalid input. And then we have the invalid input exception element over here with the fault info and the message being things that we construct in the server side. So this is a pretty handy tool. We can send different SOAP requests directly in XML format and see the response also directly in XML format. And this tool actually has a lot of features. We are just scratching the surface here. Like I said, this is used in a lot of uh, QA related activity when we need to test uh, web services. Uh, we are just looking at the most basic feature that this tool provides, which is you know sending a SOAP request and getting a SOAP response. It has a lot of other stuff, which I would definitely encourage you to explore. But uh, this is very useful if you don't want to be tied to the Glassfish tester page. And of course, this does not have the exception limitation that we've seen in the Glassfish tester page. So think of this as just another tool in your toolbox when you're uh, testing web services, kind of like a replacement for the Glassfish tester page when you don't want to use that.